these are the stories making headlines on Capital TV. Residents of Baraka Estate in Mbakasi East held protests on Wednesday over the poor condition of the roads in the area. Those who spoke to Capital News Beat expressed their disappointment over what they described as empty assurances by the authorities for several years now, especially during times of campaign. Other than their vehicles consistently developing mechanical problems, the residents lament that the road pose a security threat for those commuting early or late in the evening since it does not have traffic lights. For the longest period ever, we've tried to talk out to the Kura people, we've talked out to the... I mean, we don't understand if you have any leadership in, in Mbakasi at all. Yeah, because whenever they are asking for our votes, they come out asking for our votes. And they really try to convince us to vote, to vote for them. But after voting, no one is showing up. Even today, unfortunately, after all this, no, one, no leader has shown up. Opposition leaders have again taken issue over an alleged plot to remove Director of Public Prosecutions, Kariako Tobiko, from office. Former Vice President Kalonzo Musioka, Machako Senator Johnston Mudama, and CIA Senator James Arengo say the Jubilee government should not interfere with public institutions. The leaders, in conjunction with the Red Cross on Tuesday, donated blankets, mosquito nets, and roofing sheets to the victims of a whirlwind in Tala. First Lady Margaret Kenyatta has received the pledge of a donation in the form of a cervical cancer screening machine to her Beyond Zero campaign from Biozec Kenya. The machine, which was being piloted in Kitui, reduces the frequency of testing for the human papillomavirus to every five years. First Lady Margaret Kenyatta hosted the director of Biozec Kenya, Mohamud Nganga, when he accompanied Danish ambassador to Kenya, Gert Andersen, at State House during a courtesy call. Taking a look at the international front, Burundi will hold parliamentary elections on June 29th and a presidential poll on July 15th, the presidency announced on Wednesday. The troubled Central African nation has been in crisis over President Pierre Nkurunziza's controversial bid to stand for a third consecutive five-year term. While the elections have been delayed in line with demands from the opposition and regional powers, Nkurunziza's spokesman repeated Tuesday that the decisive candidacy was non-negotiable. In the world of business, Deputy President William Ruta was on Wednesday among heads of states and governments attending the third tripartite COMESA, EAC, and SADC in Egypt. The deputy president is representing President Uhuru Kenyatta in the meeting, whose aim is to make it easier for the movement of goods, people and services among African countries. Ruto is accompanied by East Africa Community, Commerce and Tourism Cabinet Secretary Phyllis Candier and Foreign Affairs Principal Secretary Karanja Kibicho. The Council of Ministers finalized the preparation of the instruments to launch the tripartite free trade area on Wednesday. Our next story is a bit painful. A Spanish bullfighter gored in the testicles over the weekend by a bull that he was fighting left the hospital on Tuesday. The huge black fighting bull reared its head and thrust its left horn in Marco Gallon's groin, lifting him in the air after he thrust two spears into the animal's back on Sunday at Madrid's Las Ventas Bullring, Spain's largest. The bull's right horn went through his blue and white jacket, knocking him to the ground, and he was dragged to the ground before the bullfighters used their capes to lure the animal away. Ouch. All right, and that's a wrap-up of the day's top stories. I've been your host, Angela Wamboy. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.capitalfm.co.ke forward slash TV.